DPP, Paula Llewellyn, has ruled that the police corporal implicated in the haircutting incident involving Rastafarian and Zynga King should not be charged. Now, the Independent Commission of Investigations, so Indicom, had also reportedly arrived at a similar opinion. Hmm. So the DPP had been uh, awaiting a forensic examination report for the past three weeks to complete a ruling. Uh, the matter was initially being investigated by the police inspector before it was taken over by Indicom. <laughs> the DPP also found that there were serious credibility issues in reviewing the complaint brought by Nzinga King, who claimed her dreadlocks were cut by a policewoman while in custody. According to the DPP, King contradicted her own accounts and the accounts of witnesses too. So King stated that she was in a taxi during the altercation that led to her arrest. However, the police and a classmate said she was walking along the street without a mask when she was arrested. Uh, King also said that after she was taken back into custody for failing to pay her fine for the DRMA breach, she was first taken to the bathroom where an officer cut her hair, then taken to her cell. The police, along with two detainees, said that she was taken directly to her cell. The detainees also said King tore out her own hair. Another witness who identified as King's classmate said King had stated that she wanted to cut her locks about a week before the incident. Now after the incident, she said King complained about the loss of her hair and she that she, that she was very sorry that she had cut it. Hmm. Now, when yeah. I first heard this story, I, <laughs> uh, I was like, again, like, is there, like, this Black History Month, like, this is, <laughs> is, is what is happening and it, it's interesting like i don't have locks i don't have locks i comb out my hair and there is a knot in it it it, it, it happened yeah so to quote unquote tear out your own locks yeah so i remember i was at a show one time and i and i, and I found the tear out one of my locks then and piece of my scalp come out. Who did what? Piece of my, yeah. I try to hold on to any part of it and grab one of my locks then, man. Because we were moving so fast through the crowd. It pulled out. New York, long time ago. But piece of my scalp come out too. <clears throat> so I, it can't be a... I mean, I see how somebody can sit down and tear out all of them locks. Like all that one here. I mean, I wait there. I look into the camera and find it. Like, this can't draw out, brother. <laughs> no, it's time. I don't mean, know. No. But it's, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm, it, I mean. It's dubious. Yeah. The story's all over And And look at her here. Like, to do to all of them, like, it, that makes sense? No, nah, it, it don't make sense. It don't make sense to me. I mean, these things, these things, you know, I mean, I, I am not privy to any of the evidence, mm -hmm. but that story don't make sense to me to tear out our own locks. I mean, I know people can go to lengths because they more implicate somebody a certain way. You know, people beat up themselves and this, this, that, that. But to tear out each and every dreadlock out of them here, I me mean, not see that. What you know, what you can prove, you know. It's, yeah. It's, it's a thing. I me mean, not see that, I me mean, not um, believe that. Hmm. It's interesting. The DPP is going to go on, go on well, see. Yeah, well, them, them, them decide what them decide, but I me mean, not believe that, I me mean, not buy it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. so entertainment icon, hip hop legend, and entrepreneur Snoop Dogg is officially Snoop in charge of Death Row Records. It's a sentimental move considering Death Row Records launched Snoop's career in the 90s with his debut album. Snoop said, and I quote, I'm thrilled, I'm thr I can't do the Snoop voice. I'm thrilled and appreciative of the opportunity to acquire the iconic and culturally significant Death Row Records brand, which has immense untapped future value. It feels good to have ownership of the label I was a part of at the beginning of my career and as one of the founding members. I'm looking forward to building the next chapter of Death Row Records. Yeah, so the deal comes on the heels of Snoop Dogg's latest album, B.O.D.R., um, being released today, actually, February 11th. Death Row Records was founded by Dr. Dre, Suge Knight and the D.O.C., as well as Dick Griffey. Um, and it rose to prominence with a number of the most historic names in hip-hop artists including the late Pac. great Tupac Shakur. Yeah, you know, this feels good, actually. So, I mean, we'll go from, we'll go from one, one um, story uh, with, with seeming oppression um, to a story of, of, of 
acquisition and, and, and ascendance. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I mean, Snoop, he started as, as, uh, as a puppy. And, yeah, as a, as a gangster on the label. He started as a puppy. <laughs> yes, as a, as a young gangster on the label them, they, that, that could have rap and now he owns the label. So he will now have. Although Snoop did always have a certain amount of pull and influence, now he yes. have the, the machinery. Yes, has deep pull and influence. Yeah, he have the machinery for, for, for can push young youths and change them lives. So it, it's inspiring. I wonder if we can like them afterlife records, you know? No, man, but if you change the name, it's going to kill like... No, 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 I mean like a branch. Like, so Death Row Records is afterlife and then Resurrect True. Records. True. Sure. Imam Puffy would have with that one. Like, Why? Uh, Biggie. Biggie. Biggie never owned oh, no, that. That's a life after that Biggie album. Right. And, and, and um, Dr. Dre now is is Aftermath. No. True, true. It, yeah, Aftermath, is, yeah. Is, is, is Dre? Yeah. Aftermath? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Slim. Slim is what? Eminem. Eminem is... is... I don't even know Eminem label name. I don't know one of them. No, no. We'll soon find out. When them done, yeah. when them done with, with the Super but, Bowl Sunday, we will Yeah, but I'll, listen to me. I'll be watching the Super Bowl. because my. Well, I'll be watching the concert. I hear, I hear there's a football game going on around the concert. Yeah. 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 No. But I'll be watching the concert at halftime of that thing. When name, we have to watch it. When name Serial Bowl. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Wow. Yeah, man, we don't play them football. We play football with foot out here, man. I don't call it football, but I, I like the sport. We'll actually, the team that we'll I... Football. The team we'll that like the sport I support too, but we'll actually I in the Super much. Bowl. I don't want to hype it too much. Yeah, I like the so sport too, but I don't want to hype it. LA Rams, big up yourself. Reggae boys, big up yourself. Ah, who? Reggae boys, you yeah, who? New legislation. Till death. To all when they lose. Out, out there? Mm hmm. Continue. <laughs> to increase the penalty <laughs> for illegal firearm possession was tabled in the House of Representatives on Thursday afternoon. Now, the Firearms Prohibition Restriction and Regulation Act will repeal the Firearms Act. So, National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang, who tabled the bill, said that the act contains harsher penalties and comprises of two regimes. One, to treat the prohibited weapons and, other de and the other dealing with firearms duly registered by the, the authorities. He noted that all illegal guns that have not been subject to local regulatory to the local regulatory regime are now considered prohibited firearms and will be treated with stronger penalties and a different regime hmm. the proposed act recommends life imprisonment for people convicted of illegal possession of a firearm convicts are to serve no fewer than 15 years in prison before being eligible for parole and so the proposed law contains new offenses such as the stockpiling of firearms, which will see a sanction of life imprisonment for people convicted of illegal possession of three or more firearms or 50 or more rounds of ammunition. It is proposed that those convicts will not be eligible for parole before serving 20 years in prison. You mean more than 50 rounds? Uh, I can't have 50 rounds or more. No, 50, 50 rounds are allowed. Right, so it can't be 50 rounds or more, it has to be more than 50 rounds. Well, if yeah. you allowed 50 rounds, that means the 51 is illegal. Right, right, right. They can't that, yeah, you know. So, suppose 52 people rush you. Ah, you ready now? Depends on the rounds. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Leave it right there. Correct. <laughs> Yeah, but um, I wonder about these things, you know. Yeah. My, my thing is, I don't have any problem with these things. If you if if you intend to push the same to 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 find these illegal firearm holders wherever they are, then that is one thing. But to me, this seems like a target on fire on legal firearm holders. That's what it seemed like. How, how so? Even when you hear the act. The act in itself, like just the, the, the wording for the name of the act in itself is 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 restrictive and 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 and, and what's what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Is it repelling people, it pushing people back, it dissuading people, it discouraging people Stop from it. legally owning a firearm. You understand what I'm saying? Like when you have something called the firearms act, you understand that this is an act now that will govern the, the, the possession of a firearm and use of a firearm. Yeah, right, right. But when you have something that name, what name? What, 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 what the name change to? Uh, so the pro, so the uh, firearms fire prohibition, pro restriction and regulation. Prohibition and restriction and regulation act. Good God, man. Say that fast, No, man. No, 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 no. Jar. There's a lot of tea sipping. <laughs> that, that, that. 
Oh, wait, we have one minute left more. I just something I would have just talked about earlier. Right. I remember one day I was driving and I was listening to World Cup at the time on the radio. And I think Brazil was playing. I mean, they rate Brazil them time then. Yeah, everybody. They lose. I mean, I said, John, don't start. Brazil, I lose. You know, and like, I think about it, I mean, I said, Brazil, if Brazil don't make it to the World Cup, how many Brazilians are going to sit there and cheer for Jamaica, for instance, or Germany instead? Why we do this? Why Jamaicans do this? We have a team, we have a team in you know, the World Cup. Granted, it don't matter whether the team good, whether the team bad, whether the team are play right, whether the team are play bad. Why is it that if we don't make it to the World Cup, we are going to pick somebody else to say, are we team that? And our team, we like them, maybe. Maybe, maybe we just like the colour of the jersey. Maybe the, you are so, you are bring France, and next man I bring Germany, and next man I bring... No, it doesn't make sense to me no more. So you're talking about my teams side. that actually make it to the World Cup? Met, in general. We just no, no, talk about reggae boys. Jamaica hasn't made it to the World Cup in a while. So. In a matter. So because of that, me for just make World Cup go on, so? Yeah. No, yeah, but you, you, can, you, can, you can make it go on, so? It's not important if your team not do that. Me say, uh, yes, it's important. I'm just uh, telling you. You can watch it, but you know, I'm not carrying nobody. Listen, sport, sports enthusiasts, we will connect to a team because of a style of play, um, certain players and stuff like that. So we continue that euphoria along their journey. Jamaica, we're all Jamaicans, we support reggae boys. But the reggae boys in the World Cup, who for us do? Make it just go on somewhere there? No, you can just, we can check the score. No, man, more watch a game, man. Why get involved, man, when them... We look. Yeah, yeah it's so wow. Well. No, I'm gonna depend it again. Yes. Reggae boys. Oh, well, well, cool. not news. Well, then guess what? You have nothing at all to you, you won't be surprised. Yeah, I'm good. At all. On that note, Daytime Live will be right back. I will have holy more buzz when we're forward. Mm. Bless yeah. us. Reggae boys do have the buzz.